Well, when we think of materials, we usually think of bending, especially in metal, past its elastic limit like this, and then we permanently deform the metal, and then we can't really get it back very easily, uh, and we have to do some special treatments to get that back to it, its original shape. Now, with a shape memory alloy like this, it's got some really unique properties that you don't see in other metals. For example, it's super elastic. Look at that. You wouldn't be able to do that level of elasticity with a normal metal without it being permanently deformed. It's also got this really cool behavior, which is uh, called shape memory behavior. Now, to do that, I have to take it to a lower temperature. So I'm just cooling it down here. I just let it cool. And then when it's at its low temperature phase, I can deform it into a sh any shape I like. There you go. And just to get it back to its original high temperature phase, to snap it back, I just need to heat it up. And I'll pop it in some warm water just to do that. There you go. So it's recovered back to its high temperature phase. Now, obviously, I can have a bit of fun with this. Let's take this and put it all the way in. So here we go. I've just got to watch the end here because I don't want to get liquid nitrogen spraying into my face. I'm going to pop it all the way in. See, just like a, a reverse uh, rope trick. You can just stick it all the way in. Look at this. It's eating it all up. There you go. And remember, it's, it's low temperature phase. I'm going to try and get it all in. There you go. I'll take it out. And there you go. Like magic. It's held its low temperature structure. And as long as it doesn't warm up, it'll keep that structure. Of course, I have room temperature here, and room temperature is, is, is above the vital temperature, which is called the uh, transition temperature for the, for the switching between the high temperature phase and the low temperature phase. And so eventually, this will uncurl slowly. Now, this will take a few minutes because it's got quite a high thermal mass, so it takes a while for it to warm up room temperature. So I'm, we're going to speed the film up, otherwise you're going to get a bit bored. So we'll just wait here, and I'm going to twiddle this round so you can see it going. There we are. Brilliant. Look at that. Fantastic. So, so remember when it's when it's uh, its high temperature phase, I can push it into its low temperature phase by applying some stress. That's called a super elasticity. Or I can drop it into temperature, into a low temperature uh, environment, like this liquid nitrogen. I can drop it below its transition temperature. It's now in its low temperature phase. I can deform it like I did it before. And I can now take it out again. But this time I'm going to try and heat it up quickly. Because before it took a while to heat up. So obviously there's a lot of energy stored in there because I put a lot of energy to deform the material into its new phase. So here we go. I'm going to drop it in. I'm going to stand a wee bit back because it's going to go like crazy. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> there we have it. Didn't quite go as according to plan, but never mind. It illustrates the point. There we go. I'll do it again just for the fun of it. You can see I'm going to have endless hours of fun with this. Here we go. One, two, three. Whoa! <laughs> and there we've got it. Look at that. Fully transformed back again. And of course, that's to be expected because it's not a diffusion slow process. It actually does it by a sheer transformation. What we've done with this uh, little clip is to cool it down and to bend it into uh, a different shape in its low temperature phase. Uh, and now as it slowly warms up on my very warm hand, um, it's going to revert to its original shape. So what's this used for, David? Well, it's designed for uh, bones, uh, fractured fractures in bones, and you put the pin either side of the fracture. And so you can imagine you drill a little hole in your bone, pop one end in, put the other end of the staple in the other side, and then as it warms up, obviously, it closes the, the fracture site up. Now, one of the beauties of this alloy is that you can tune the tr transition temperature so that you can have the shape memory effect at any temperature you like between about minus 100 to plus 100 for this particular alloy. And you just have to change the composition of the alloy slightly. So anyhow, here I have a typical spring. 
And this one's got a transition temperature of about 60 to 70 degrees. So I'm in its high, low temperature state now. So that means I can deform it. So it's low crystal, low temperature crystal phase called martensite, and it holds its shape. But again, to get it back to its high temperature phase, I have to go above 60 degrees. So I've got some hot water here. There we go. And it's gone back to its original shape. Easy, and I've got my spring back again. <laughs>